everybody. Come on in. It's the Sean Yankee Show. Please like and share. Get this out. I count on you guys to share the show. And doubly so tonight because I have just been scatterbrained today. I guess. I don't know. But in prepping for the show, I forgot to share to a few of the places that I usually share to. So that is why, if anyone noticed, that I didn't share there because I got sidetracked and missed that opportunity. And I tried doing it just now, but I'm doing a lot during the music. The music is really for me to be able to make sure we're up and streaming and check the audio, make sure the mic is working and things like that. Because I've actually got on here many times and talked to myself for quite a while. I'm actually not proud of how often that's happened. But how, how do you say your name? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt it. I am horrible with names. But Kayetta, she says it's uh, her first time watching. Well, I hope I do a good job for you. This is a, it's a weird little show. It's a conversational chat, opinion, audience driven show. Hey Joan, hey Lisa, good to see some people here on Facebook. Helen's here. Again, Facebook is not showing me how many people are here, but hey Steve, good to see you guys. Lacey's here. And we're up on we're up on YouTube as well, and Periscope's going good, so we can get into the conversation. Yes, yeah, Steve, we don't bite. Don't worry about it. You're completely safe here. But today was May Day general strike, so how did that go for everybody? You know, with the basic principle was not to work, not to spend any money, shop, or make purchases that you didn't need to. Or if you could avoid it, how'd you do? How did it go? What was your experiences with it? There was a lot of participation worldwide in the general strike. It it did very well, you know. And it needs to be something that continues forward. There is a general strike movement. These are the type of things we need to do. This direct action. Joining together as a society with common goals. That's what we need to do. That's what's important. I don't think politics matters. I think all of that is just divisive bullshit. You know, I think what's important is the people taking ownership of our situation and doing all we can to improve it. That's what I think is important. That's what we tend to center around anymore on here on this show um, because I have had it with politics myself Helen says this show is like something you'd overhear from a table of friends talking in a restaurant but you don't have to strain there you go there you go it's like getting into listening to a conversation he said you did good no work no purchases bought it's good the strike went well today I broke the purchase rule. I'm going to rat myself out. But it was cannabis. Is that okay? Please tell me that's okay. Because the little shop that I get it from, it's medically legal in Missouri now. But they're only open one to two days a week. This happened to be the day the lounge was open. So I, I purchased flower but I don't think that counts I think that's okay and that's not the man matter of fact I read a story that made me feel a lot better about my purchase that cannabis industry is actually being hit especially hard right now because they didn't get a lot of protections or maybe any at all under the stimulus package as far as businesses go so the startup cannabis businesses like the one I'm shopping at need that kind of support so I think it's okay it wasn't the man it's not like I went to Joe's cannabis yeah Steve okay thank you thank you I feel better I feel better because I did it it's over with it's done 
But I avoided stores, and I think that was the general idea. You know, corporate stores and things like that, and buy my Mountain Dew like I like to do, and, and it's and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we need to keep the focus on. This went really well. I'm excited about this, and I like seeing all the participation from around the world. But we need to keep going forward now and continue with the Amazon strike. Get involved in the general strike movement. It's a whole movement. And it's much more than just work strikes. It's debt strikes and rent strikes as well. Yeah, Joan, little shops get a pass. We need them. Okay, cool. So I'm good. Good, because it's done. And I just felt like I had to give Cannabis Appreciation Month a send-off. You know, it was 420 for a whole month. That was special. You know, a lot of things took the shine away from that. But we need to remember. It's important to never forget. Lacey, you're here on two platforms. You are working hard. You're on Facebook and YouTube. I imagine you're like one of them hackers in the Matrix and you have multiple screens up. Helen says I'm going to be out tomorrow. I, have, I haven't been in forever because I haven't had the chance to go out. Plus, fuck Pritzker. Who's Pritzker? Is that your governor? Illinois is fucking up in a lot of ways. But Helen could tell you they're, they're really restrictive with this lockdown and a lot of the BS that they got going on with that. So there's a lot of things she could be talking about. She might be talking about the way they price gouge cannabis. Illinois is fucking up. Hey, Dale. Good to see you. Steve says anti-lockdown protesters got all of the press here in L.A. There's a lot of that anti-lockdown protest going on. And just out of curiosity, how do you guys feel about that? I'm, I'm starting to wonder if I'm being irresponsible because I am not worried about this virus. I'm not afraid of it. And it's all over the media. It's everywhere. Everybody's telling me I should be, but I'm not. And I'm not seeing anything in the statistics that's making me feel like that's wrong. So, I want to I want to be responsible. I want to, you know, because I'm on here talking. Although I'm very clear that I'm just giving my opinion, I'm not a doctor. I'm not concerned, and but I'm but I am concerned by the stuff I'm seeing. Like, for instance, there was a lot of news out of Canada today that I found very interesting. Justin Trudeau announced that they're extending the lockdowns in Canada till there is a vaccine. Now, is it also going to be mandatory there? Are they going to track it? What does all this mean? What, when have we ever reacted like this to something? But the other thing they did in Canada during this, during this pandemic, is they banned assault weapons. They just banned 1,500 different types of, of military style assault weapons in Canada and, and uh, it's pretty sweeping le legislation yeah Steve Jack must have over celebrated 420 he, he, uh, he'll wait he'll come later you can never be late to a Sean Yankee show that's the one thing about this that's so special anytime you show up you're right on time so even if you're here later because most of our views come later, actually, after the live. About half. Still participate. Take part in the show. Because I always need stuff to talk about later on. And I love reading your comments. And it helps us do better in the algorithm and get out to more viewers. And tricks the computer into thinking this is, you know, interesting and good. And that it should share it with people. Dale says, I don't know anyone who's been affected by this virus. Now, I don't either. But Missouri hasn't been hit especially hard. I have people on other media platforms that are pissed at me. Saying that I'm being irresponsible. That it is a really dangerous virus. And, and they've been dramatically hit personally. So 
I don't know how to feel. Whenever this much propaganda is thrown at me, and whenever these, this many red flags are popping up everywhere, it messes with how I, how I see it. You know, am I crazy? I don't, I don't feel like this is justified. Susan says that you're still on major lockdown where they are, where she is. I'm not surprised you feel more comfortable since you're an essential worker and get out often. I'm completely comfortable. And I am an essential worker. So I work in the restaurant industry. We're considered essential. And nothing's really changed as far as going to work, having a job. I still work the same amount of hours, so I haven't been affected in that way. And I am out every day. I'm not worried about this virus at all. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know why. I, I see people gaslight people who aren't and call them COVID idiots. I'm concerned that it's a virus. I, I don't want it to sound like I'm saying there's not. But it, it's no more of a concern to me than any flu or sickness in the past has been. You know what I mean? No reason to change my way of life. I don't see any reason for all of this. And um, a lot of what they're doing and talking about is scary talk based around this virus, the Rona. Kayeta says, I feel like they're putting the, those of us who have pre-existing conditions at risk, the elderly at risk, the entire population at risk. I had septic pneumonia in September and I was on a vent for two months. I'm still recovering. But can I ask you a question? And I don't want this to sound insensitive at all. But isn't, isn't anything, any sickness, dangerous? Or is this especially dangerous? I am coming from a place of ignorance when I'm asking that too. I'm not being cute even. I'm, I'm being serious. Like the flu or pneumonia or these other infections that would be threats as well. How does Corona compare? Is basically what I'm asking. Because I hear that a lot. And I know that's true. That it, it affects people with compromised immune systems, respiratory infection, prob or respiratory problems, and the elderly especially hard. But... I'm wondering about other things statistically and how they behave in the same way, same situation, same groups of people in comparison. I do live in a cornfield, so take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. I live in the middle of cornfields. I'm surrounded by farmland. I live in rural Missouri, and Missouri's been hit not very hard at all by this. You know, on the little map, we're like light pink. We're not a red state on the Rona map where they track this outbreak. So we don't have a lot of cases. I don't I haven't personally seen any. I don't know anybody that has it. And I'm seeing the whole world shut down over it. So I'm a little perplexed. I got to tell you doesn't make much sense to me but like Steve says I'm just some rural Missouri cornfield living fool what do I know where it says it looks like you have sugar diabetes or older you're at higher risk of complication now I wear a mask and safety goggles not only to protect me but others so this doesn't feel normal to me, wearing masks and stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't feel normal to me. Something feels weird about this entire thing. I'm just saying. Steve says we may need those assault rifles the way things are going. What do you think about that? Canada banning assault, we assault weapons. I don't know how I feel about that anymore. I used to feel like, well, there's no reason for people to have these extremely dangerous weapons, but 
1,500 different weapons were banned? I'd have to look at the list and see what's considered assault weapon because I've been told by a lot of Second Amendment people that that's a very loose term. That, that blanket can mean a lot of things, that it really doesn't have a meaning. So it can be interpreted all kinds of ways. Jones says this is especially dangerous with rest. Ugh. I can't talk today. Respiratory problems. I've had pneumonia six times, so I'm at risk. Susan says when we live in a dense area, it's different. Look at New York City. But isn't New York City doing amazingly well compared to how bad they thought it was going to be? They're even talking about pulling a lot of the aid that they gave them and a lot of the equipment that they gave them because it didn't even end up getting used. Steve says, you can see the fear in people's eyes above the masks here in Los Angeles. Are you personally concerned? How do you guys feel? Seems like most of you are. Kayeta lives in a very small town. I understand only one case of COVID in my county. I understand your feels. Well, I'm glad you get what I'm saying. Because I'm not saying that there's not a virus and that it's not dangerous. I'm saying that this is, this is strange. This complete change of our ways of life. You know, they're, and they're open about things never going back to normal. And then they're talking about, like Canada, extending their lockdown until there is a vaccine. And they're talking about tracking and tracing everybody who has the vaccine. I don't like a lot of that talk. Yeah, I worry about Ginger too. Ginger works in the healthcare industry. And she's on the front lines, literally. Like, I'm an essential employee, but I don't do anything but sell hamburgers. She's really in the fight. So, yeah, I worry about her a lot, too, with this. Dolores says, my brother, sister-in-law, and nephew recovered from it. They reside in New York. I have family in New York in the medical field, and it's brutal there. Susan's very concerned. I feel angry when I encounter those who are not wearing masks. Really? Well, I guess I'm of the unpopular opinion. I hate this wearing a mask thing. I had to wear a mask for the first time yesterday. was forced to. And it made me angry. It still makes me angry. I don't want to do it. I really don't. I don't like it. Dolores said, had New York not taken it seriously when they did, it would have risen higher. Helen says Prickster's going to milk it as long as he can. I'm going to go ahead and assume that's the governor. I didn't see whether or not you said it was, but... Did your cat walk across your keyboard, you, uh, uh, Lacey? Because you have a flagged comment on YouTube, and it's just random letters. But that could also be a link to something, like the beginnings of a link or something. Oh, had your phone in your pocket. There you go. That was a butt dial. Let's see. I don't know. What else is going on in the world besides the Rona? I don't know, even know enough to talk about it. I don't, I'm not comfortable with it, though. I don't have good feelings about it. It concerns me. It's got me worried about how much they'll use this for. The, they, you're, they are using it, the fear of this. They're using it, and they're creating a lot of it. So for what? What are they going to do? What will they accomplish during it? You know, they've accomplished a lot so far. So what else will they do? I worry about stuff like that. Susan says, it's very unusual, it's very uncomfortable, but it's much more uncomfortable six feet under the ground. I'm not afraid of this virus. And it has a 0.5 mortality rate. I'm not afraid of the flu. I've never gotten a flu vaccine. 
you know I don't see the justification for the fear I, I really feel like George Carlin used to say on germs that your body has an immune system and needs germs to practice on I've, I've always felt that way I've never been a germ phobe I've never been overly concerned about illnesses or viruses and it probably will never change it's just something about me like a personal thing. I'm not a worrier about things like that or getting sick. I don't let it concern me. I guess if I had a reason for it to, that it would. But I've been lucky, you know, and I have a really strong immune system and I've, I've never really had to worry about it much. Dolores says, I think you would feel awful if you were asymptomatic you spread it to someone by not wearing a mask. Yeah, Prickster's the governor. I knew it. I knew it. He's milking this, hoping for bailout money for years of bad fiscal decisions. I want the money to keep going. I've been getting, uh, my employer's actually been pretty cool. And we get extra money per hour for working during the, during the Rona, I want that to keep going. I'll, I'll be a, I'll be sad to see that go away. I really will. That's kind of nice. That's one of the nice things about this. And I guess because of that, I should be like, all right, I'll wear the mask. But I hate that thing. Susan says, I've never been scared either. I don't get the flu shot either, but this is not the flu. And... You understand, though, that it's very similar to it. It's not incredibly dangerous. You know, the look at how they tell you to protect yourself. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Every video, every five seconds, wash your hands. Wash your hands. Use, you know, sanitizer. Stay six feet away from people. Just regular safety measures. It's a virus. A coronavirus is just a strain of a virus. It's called that because of its shape. There's lots of them, lots of different strains of the coronavirus. All the way to the common cold, there's strains of the common cold that are coronaviruses. What makes this so special? They said, uh, my husband said they were People protesting at a homeless shelter in St. Louis. People who lost their homes. They had people sitting in lawn chairs, smoking blunts, drinking, playing music, and hookers and pimps in St. Louis gear. Security just hanging out and watching them. What? Helen says that the uh, governor recently bought a crap ton of PPE from China. He loves China. Lots of Hyatt hotels there. Is he tied to Hyatt? Joan says, I was reading a post today. I think I shared it. There was a bad pandemic during Woodstock and over 100,000 people died from it. I think it said H3N2 virus. Um, didn't like nearly over 200,000 people die from the swine flu? When was that? Wasn't that 2009? I'm terrible with numbers and dates, so I'm probably wrong. But there's been a lot of viruses that were very serious. There's never been this reaction. Jones says killing all the germs is what is killing a lot of people because they kill off their natural immunities. That's what I'm saying. Your body... Is, is has its own defenses, but you don't give it anything to practice on. It needs things to fight on, get strong. I'm not a doctor. It, it, it's going to be very clear that I'm not a doctor. I don't know what I'm talking about. It was 2009. See, I'm right every once in a while. I get it right more often than, than not, actually. I don't give myself enough credit. But I am terrible with numbers. 
Helen says his family owns Hyatt. Last election, we had the choice of two billionaires. Isn't that fantastic, the way that's set up that way? I had some of the other, the other day telling me, wouldn't it be great if Mark Cuban would run for president? Why, 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 why are we talking about billionaires being president? It's like when we were talking about Oprah. People were literally saying, Oprah should run for president. Why? What qualifies her to be president? Aren't we trying to elect someone to one of the most important jobs there is? And why do billionaires want to be president? That's another really good question. Susan says the Spanish flu was also a virus. The virus morphed and got smart. Therefore, the second wave killed millions more. We have to avoid this virus from mutating. Stay home and wear masks. Steve caught the swine flu. It's the sickest he's ever been. Brett says Mother Jones says uh, COVID-19 has infected and killed black people at alarming rates. This data proves it. Helen says, I'm 56 and my last vax was in early 70s, yet I'm here, yet I'm where sick kids come for quarantine and I don't catch anything from them. I'm not worried. Not, you know, and I don't think this stay-at-home orders and these lockdowns are for our safety. I don't think that's what's going on. I know a lot of people are buying this fear propaganda. And are extremely concerned. I'm not. And I think it's all very dangerous. And I think it's being used for nefarious reasons. Yeah. I would totally win. Yeah. Especially after that last comment. But I'm, I really believe that this is. Uh, this is a show. And they're pushing agendas. That they've had on the back burner. For a long time. And I think that's what they're doing. Hey, Kilo. Good to see you. Steve says, what happened to the Spanish flu? Did it mutate out of existence? I don't know, but I I know that was, uh, that's ringing a bell as something that was very serious. I've heard of that. Helen says, I too, to buy anything, especially propaganda, to P.O., To Poe. Oh, I get you. I was a little slow on the uptake on that one. I'm a little ashamed. To Poe. I'm too Poe I'm too Poe as well to buy propaganda. And whenever it's poured on this heavy, I don't know. I don't believe that, that this stuff is really being done for anybody's safety. I believe there were uprisings happening all over the world. There was a mass awakening happening. They're losing their hold over the narrative. This was perfect to get a hold over everything and make a few changes that they've been wanting to do for a long time. Yeah, Joan says if the lockdown was for our safety, Walmart would be closed. Walmart is so busy. The restaurant I work at, super busy. There's a lockdown right now. It's supposed to be a $1,700 fine. If you're out, you know, on a non-essential task, there's people out all over the place. Seems like there's more people out now than there ever was. Brett says it looks like it's getting the ones that think they think is draining the system. There is a depopulation agenda. They do plan to eliminate a large number of us. And that's real. They're not looking out for our best interests. That's what I'm saying. So whenever they act all concerned and this is all for your safety, I'm instantly suspicious because they don't give a shit about you. You know, these people, these people that are our leaders, they, they're not working in your best interest and the things that they do are not in your best interest. So I don't trust them. And I don't don't trust their intent. Hey, Marie. He says one of the things that caused the Spanish flu to expand worldwide was the troop movements during World War I. And Helen is too tough for the Rona. It's pro- it probably is afraid of her. I, I, I wouldn't blame it. It's a tough bird. 
but let's see. I don't want to talk about Rona anymore. Jones says they're saying this could last two years. I, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. What are they doing? You know, I don't believe this is for a virus. I don't believe it. I don't believe this is for our protection. This this is uh, very suspicious. Hill says it's targeting the elderly and those with other medical condition. It's what all viruses do, whatever season. I hate it. I wish it would stop. It's not gonna though. It's not going away. Susan says cats can get it now. What? So I thought pets couldn't get it at all. And that sucks. Something. It, well, it, it may be nothing. Facebook's acting weird. Facebook does that from time to time. I'm going to ignore it. Steve says, women say as Biden talked about her boobs when she was only 14. A woman says that Biden doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me. Creepy Uncle Joe is called Creepy Uncle Joe for a reason. He's been known that for that as that for a long time. They know. They know about Joe. These elites, they know. This was no surprise to them. So that wasn't new information. They just don't give a shit. Dolores says the problem is in dense locations. Susan says, yep, there were tigers in a New York City zoo who got it first from a caretaker. Dogs can catch the Rona too? Man, I like dogs better than I like people. So maybe I need to wear a mask. Helen says the fear mongering isn't going away, that's for sure. It's mutating more than the viruses are. I worry about stupidity as far as epidemics go more than I do anything. That's what I think is the real threat to the world. Kilo says I don't think that if the country has actually faced the crisis, the population would trust them anyway, so we're kind of fucked up the creek either way. I just don't ever feel like they have our best interests at heart. And I don't think that's what they're working towards. I think they have a completely uh, different agenda that is uh, separate from what benefits us. Yeah, I've read The Stand. Captain Trips. You know, the, the virus that wiped out humanity in The Stand. I love, I love Stephen King. Big Stephen King fan. Yeah, I do. I love dogs more than people, too. I, I, I love dogs. They're great. You know, and I've never, I've never had a dog let me down. I can't think of a time. Ever. Hey, Joey. Good to see that we had a good group tonight. I was nervous about tonight. I uh, I get nervous with this one. This one's weird, and cause that we're still learning what we're even doing, you know, and what it's about. I'm still ironing it out. Kill says no matter what goes on in the world, they always have multiple agendas going on. Absolutely, and they they roll with it. They use it. Anything that happens, they're never gonna let a good crisis go to waste. The Dark Tower series. Ooh, the Dark Tower series is one of the best things ever written. It's Stephen King's life's work. He's been writing it since he was 19 and working on it his whole life. It's an amazing story. And it incorporates all of his novels, too. It's very deep. 
the a rabbit hole among uh, among itself. But it's a uh, sci-fi, western, fantasy. It's all kinds of things rolled into one. It's not a typical Stephen King book, but I recommend it highly as well. Helen says, watching my friends list, I'm finding more sheeps and wolf clothing than the other way around. It's disappointing. Yeah. Dogs are vaccinated for a type of coronavirus, but not this ramped up one that I think is a bioweapon that is mutating and targeting in who it gets, Marie says. It's very possible that it is a bioweapon. That's not outside the realms of possibilities. And in fact, Dr. Fauci was funding research through his organization in Wuhan of bat coronaviruses, exactly what this is, with um, enhanced, I forget the type of research they call it, but they have a clever way of hiding what they're doing. But they're enhancing the virus in order to make it dangerous to humans, and then they try to fight it. Well, what is thought to have happened is that this escaped, which wouldn't be the first time that's happened either. Steve says it seems like a bioweapon. Then it's and like I said, it, it it could be. But this is gonna wrap up early tonight. I have to because I'm taking Babel's out to dinner and she just messaged me that she's hungry, so I gotta wrap up. But thanks for watching. This is the Sean Yankee Show. We gather and hang out every weeknight at 7. We usually hang out a little longer. It usually goes at least an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, two hours. Sometimes it gets crazy and becomes a marathon. You never really know. But every day at 7 Central, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. I think that's right. I think I nailed it that time. I'm getting better at the time zones. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys Monday on the next episode. And remember, Wednesday nights, they're conspiracy theory shows. So I'm going to need a topic to cover this coming up Wednesday. Any conspiracies you guys would like to see covered, let me know. And i got to pick one to make a video for Wednesday. But thanks for watching, guys, and have a great weekend.